Chesapeake Bay is unusual because it's so large. It, there's a large surface area over which the wind can really get cranking. And that's one of the things I've been working on, how wind affects the estuary. I was a physics major back in undergraduate school, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do afterward. I had this image of a physicist with a white lab coat and, a, and, a, um, and glasses and a pocket protector, and I didn't want to be in a lab. I applied for graduate school in oceanography and geophysics. And geophysics, I knew nothing about. My thesis work was taking current meters, mooring them on the continental shelf, and at that time, not many people had done that. The advantage of having current meters moored, you could start looking over uh, enough time to see all kinds of influences on currents. We have to have large observing systems, the Chesapeake Bay observing system, to be able to connect not just the local wind forcing, not just the local river flow, and not just the interaction locally between the continental shelf and the estuary, but something as far away as the Gulf Stream. Why don't, why don't our models work? Well, it's, we have to include that long-term influence. So with technology, i.e. current meters in particular, we have now look at what we call variability. The ice was coming. We luckily got some of the buoys out. The northern bay, it always freezes up there. We always take that out. But we had no big vessel to, to pull this one out in time. We sometimes gamble at mid-bay. We've had many years when that buoy has been fine, but one year it moved about 20 miles up at the wind. The ice froze it in, brought it up to the Choptank River, and chewed everything off. It chewed the hull up, took all the electronics and sensors on, on the top, just totally ruined the buoy, such as this buoy here. It froze in, chewed the hull, and what happens is that when the, when the ice pushes the, the buoy, starts banging the upper superstructure and tower on the ice, took all the sensors and radio off the top, pulled the cable out, opened a hole into the hull and filled the hole with water. So we lost at least thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of gear here. Looks like the tower is in reasonably good shape. New solar panels. This is this is the occasional bad happenings in, uh, in doing moorings at sea. We'll get it back in shape.